Meanwhile in Ludo City, episode 5. It's been a long while since episode 4. Yeah, like two years, probably more. Yeah, so we should have a lot of things to talk about, right? Um, yeah, right. Uh, so, who's here today? Well, it's me, I guess. I've never been on a podcast. And who are you and what do you do? I, I am a mysterious Elias. Should we use the internet name? So no. people know who... I, I guess, like, if, if you're on a Discord, I'm Synex Tanex. Synx Tanex. I, I do a game. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's the main Slap City genius. Yeah. And uh, I'm Anton. I'm uh, Regn Sloya on Discord. Or Regn Sloya, as I guess. Slayer. Regn Sloy. And what do you do? I do the art. Yes. Daniel, I'm Daniel Remo, so I'm Remo on Discord. I, I, I do stuff. <laughs> yes, and I'm uh, Nils, and I'm a professor on uh, Discord, and I'm just another gra- graphic guy. Yeah. So, um, this is, uh, we're recording this uh, almost, uh, almost up for our like, winter holiday, so uh, this will help be kind of a recap of, for the year 2019. So what's what's happened during... Right after this is done we're going straight to a, a Yule feast. Yeah. A Yule feast. <laughs> a, a Christmas table. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, uh, like the Christmas po- uh, party for the like, office office a, block. A, where... a Yule board, which is like a smorgos board, but yeah. with Yule exactly. instead of smorgos. <laughs> so, what's um, uh, what's happened during 2019? What do you, what do you think back? <laughs> uh, I feel like we've been doing story mode for the whole. Yeah, yeah. We have, um, uh, I've certainly been doing story mode the whole year. <clears throat> yeah, it's been uh, a story heavy year. Um, do uh, do anyone have like any <laughs> strong memory from story story mode? Uh, like any, anything just, that's just getting the functionality done. <laughs> yeah, that's... that was that was very good. <laughs> It, uh, like seeing people's reactions, especially mm-hmm. g- reaching the four O's. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh yeah, like... that's the the thing to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, during uh, like <clears throat> the the days uh, o- over the days uh, when we first released uh, it was the remote. It was uh, probably one of the more amusing things uh, to watch uh, people's Twitch recordings of trying to beat the. Oh, it's stage. always very rewarding to watch people play the things you've been working on. Yeah, and finally. Yeah, it's um, one of the fun benefits of having the the Discord going on, getting and getting even a bit before that, uh, watching YouTubers. Play yeah, uh, before that, uh, uh, YouTube uh, uh, was mainly the like most direct uh, kind of fee- feedback uh, you, could get, you could get. So we made four story moves so far. No, we haven't released, but uh, when they hear this, yeah. fish main... <laughs> when, you hear, when you hear this, you will have four story moves. Yeah, Tom exactly. Was... At the time of recording, we're currently finishing up uh, fish uh, st- story mode, so... Uh, I think it's technically done now. Yeah, it's done. It's, I'm done. Very much. No items left. <clears throat> I want to post like a few things more, but it's it's pretty much done. So that uh, that makes like half half the cast. So yeah, uh, during some time and it only took one third of a year <laughs> to make uh, to get to get it out. Yeah, but it took like the entire preceding year to just get everything in place. So just just this. Uh, it's, it's been like an enormous rush of, of like feedback and relief. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. now, uh, yeah, Professor Rich is working on PSM and I'm working on Remedy. And 
but more is on this paper of things to talk about because there's <laughs> well, not there's not that much more to say about the story uh, mode. When I um, when I made the levels and I made um, we knew we were, we were gonna have a secret level, so I made what eventually became the super secret level, and Elias looked at it and said no. Yes, so I had to uh, make an easier secret level first, and I yeah, think was yeah, so I had was, to deem it illegal first. <laughs> So which, the, yeah, so but that meant I could make it even harder, which was fun. Yeah. So, so the the uh, four O's was supposed to be be the only secret yes. stage yeah. at first. And the thing is that, like during making the other levels and just uh, my knowledge of the game up to that point, there are a lot of things that are uh, too difficult for um, we can't expect casual players to just get through the I stages mean, without. I mean, I can't get through them. <laughs> No, there. no. I mean, um, I. Um, it's like the secret caves in Italy, mm -hmm. one and two. Like, um, it's the I, ultimate I can, challenge. Yeah, I can save the most difficult stuff to the end. Yeah. Well, it's good because I, I kind of like how it is now that you're kind of um, first, uh, first upping, upping the game for the first the secret stage. Um, you have to like do do a bit more crazy stuff, but then. It's then you crank, crank and go go all out for the secret secret stage. The, the really one. hardcore players uh, really appreciate the hidden level. Yeah, the the idea was that um, beating uh, the super secret level was supposed to be like a community effort, but I think it I underestimated them. They did it pretty quickly and. Uh, they also uh, discovered uh, a way of climbing walls more efficiently with Ruby than I had thought of. So yeah, they uh, they, <laughs> they, um, yeah, they did a really like in impressive uh, job on uh, like doing the doing the real community thing of beating this stage uh, together. Yeah. Um, but when you watch them deal with the level at, at first, like at release, they often forget about the wall jumps and get stuck for like hours. Oh yeah, well, I, uh, I mean, during the regular stages, you almost never have to do anything to get the secrets other than just double jump and up, up special, but if you try to overcomplicate things, it becomes much more difficult. I enjoy watching people check out the new uh, skins. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the human, human friend uh, reaction. The, <laughs> it was, was all the <laughs> well, one of human friends. Yeah, I mean he's been he's been been um, all over on social media, so he's pretty much already spoiled. But I'm I'm happy for him being spoiled because he <laughs> he deserves uh, the spotlight. Very yeah. happy for you, my friend. Although the the fish painting story mode is pretty fun. Yeah, I think. I think I think um, people will will appreciate uh, fish bending story, mm -hmm. um, but let's not uh, let's not spoil anything about that. In case it's not released yet. Yeah, it's, it, it's released. I can guarantee. It. <laughs> um, and then we can talk about. <laughs> but people may not have played it yet. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. All right, so. What's next on this list? Uh, uh, the other thing that's be, been up during during the year. I mean, we uh, we got an <laughs> Italy two vinyl record. That's something something that uh, happened yeah, during the fun. in the year. It's it was funny. I, I like when we get uh, like physical physical releases of stuff, yeah. even yeah. Uh, even like stuff like that, um, and. Uh, we got some um, some really cool um, like modding done for it to do oh, too by, that by the mod fans. Is incredible. Yeah, the, the it, big... even when we were developing it too, I I tried a bit to make an FPS thing because I thought it would be a lot of fun, but I wasn't good enough to make it happen, and uh, the programmers were busy with the real stuff. I mean, so. The, like, the, so the, I'm, I'm really happy to see it uh, actually happen. Exactly, yeah. and I mean, we were so like pressed for time there during the, the later stages of of Itadu's development. So making the like first version mode 
uh, looked nice in like with the sky box and everything we, we didn't really have time to, to do do it correctly so uh, what we're talking about is that uh, people on discord have uh, have made a, an ito do 2 mod that uh, features like a lot of yeah it's a, it's a huge community mod yeah uh, that features among other things uh, like a, a, a first person mode uh, there it's a really crazy we, we if you haven't seen it uh, we link to it from our our twitter among yeah, others you can pretty much do anything in it we can <laughs> yeah. probably link to it in the description of this podcast yes the wonders of the internet yes yeah, i really like uh, when i first saw um, the uh, boundary break uh, glitch that lets you uh, despawn loading zones. Or, well, that's not technically what's happening, but you can walk through loading zones um, with a certain pretty easy setup and walk out of bounds and explore places. And uh, I think that was really cool because that's the sort of stuff I like in uh, uh, like uh, Ocarina of Time, for example, where you can play the game normally or if you really want to, there's a million bugs and tricks you can do, which increases the longevity of the game, I think. Um, the way you do it, um, I don't recall at the top of my head, but there was a bug in Italy 2 that's very much like a certain bug in Ocarina of Time, which was pretty funny. And, um, I mean, it's not, it's not as if um, the casual players are going to go out of bounds because it's not something you're going to guess. So uh, when uh, Stefan was uh, looking through various bugs, we decided not to fix it because it's funnier if it's in there. It's a good, uh, good attitude. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't bother the casual players because it's not going to happen accidentally. Yeah, yeah well, I think that... I mean, we <coughs> we don't have a, a lot of time, so we can't like recap all the things that yeah. things that have happened uh, th this year. A, a lot of cool things have have happened uh, during the year, but I think it's uh, we can uh, move move forward a bit. Like, what's <coughs> what's happening right now with with people? What, have you been been playing playing any fun games or done anything like? I've been playing Ring Fit Adventure, oh, which is surprisingly right. engaging. Right, you, you got the... It keeps adding stuff slowly, like it starts out like a really, really simple RPG mm. and uh, it kind of adds things and now it's just a regular simple RPG. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it seems like a very long game. Mm. Yeah, that looks, that looks very cool. And I, I bought Death Stranding when I haven't been playing it, I haven't sat down to mm. play it. Yeah. Seems like an <laughs> investment. need to get like getting in, in the right mood for it. Yeah. I guess. Well, what have, what have I done this year other than work here? <laughs> <laughs> Poor thing. Uh, I've been mostly playing Crash Team Racing and Dragon Quest 7 on 3DS. Mm. Uh, any, any impressions from notes you uh, want to share? Dragon Quest 7 is very nice, very grindy, <laughs> yes. just the type of game for me. Uh, I started re reading Berserk last week. <laughs> the, the manga? Yeah. Okay. Uh, any recommendation of a yeah. friend. Yeah, and do you rec recommend it to every reader? Uh, I, I would only recommend it if you have the stomach for it. Yes. It is intensely violent. Nice. But uh, the story is rather intriguing. I've been playing uh, Druid's Town, made by the people who made uh, Legend of Grimrock. Um, uh, interesting thing about it. In Close to the end of Druid Stone, one of the characters reads a book where there is a reference back to Grimrock and it says, oh, it says here it's a modern classic, which is interesting to me because that's exactly where I wrote to them about Grimrock too, personally, and, and they replied to me, so I wonder if that's reference to my fan mail, because Grimrock too was like, 
one of the best games I've ever played. <laughs> I liked it so much. I've played it so many times. Um, so you wrote to them yeah. in an email? Yeah. And uh, Druid Stone is also very comfy. Um, it's a very different type of game. It's an RTS sort. No, it's a t turn based strategy game. So it's not about puzzles and uh, solving mysteries and quests and stuff, but still very comfy. I'm also playing um, uh, Steam World Quest, which is also very comfy. Um, very beautiful game. And it's uh, it's good. It's fun. <laughs> well, um, you played all the Steam World things. Yeah, uh, Steam World Heist was also a game I enjoyed a lot on the 3DS. I played it many times. Um, and also, while looking at uh, Ring Fit Adventure. I got the feeling it's made by the same people who made uh, Metopia. I'm not sure, but it sounds and looks very much like their work. Metopia is um, an a very light RPG on the 3DS, uh, where you use your knees and they assume various roles in the story. And um, um, it's not a typical JRPG. You can't really go into it expecting that. It's more like you have a bunch of characters and a lot of really stupid and silly and bizarre things happen all the time with how the characters interact with each other. So it's more like you get a little storybook with silly things in it. And the things that surprise people was how incredible the music is. It's a, it's very, it's a very, very polished game. You wouldn't expect that, but... Uh, there's this goblin anime which has one of the best idol animations I have ever seen in a game. And so they, they just went all out on this little cheerful RPG. <laughs> it was very nice to see. It's, it, it's very much the same with Ring Fit Adventure. It's not just a throwaway title. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot of fun stuff in it. Yes. Yeah, we tried um, Meridian f 59 there right. together, <laughs> and yes. I kind of want to mention that it's uh, because it's it's um, an, a 90s uh, MMO RPG that's been like, re-released on on Steam recently, and I just kind of wanted to mention it because I f find I'm I'm very pleased that uh, like really really old, and in this case fairly obscure games uh, have their like chance to get re-released and re-noticed re um, um, because I, I only know knew about that game like from from screenshots as one of the like early MMORPGs and uh, it was fun to actually be able to try it out just just for a um, just uh, as an experiment to try yeah. some something was, that's uh, been like dead and closed for so many years that has has had its uh, second chance like a very early 3d rpg type uh, interface yeah and very it's, jank to control yeah but it's <laughs> i mean uh, charming yeah it's it brings uh, like a lot of nostalgia, even though we have no connection to to the, that specific specific game. Like it's just yeah. that style that you that that's, uh, you can't uh, find in any new game. Uh, so it was an interesting experiment uh, yeah. to especially uh, when we all started together in the tutorial village, and then when we left it. Uh, we all ended up in different cities yeah, all across you, the world. When you leave the first area, you teleport randomly, so we had to make like a, a big adventure of just uh, it's to, it's re, re regroup. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that was pretty interesting. I also like how uh, if you want to get somewhere, you have to basically read the signs and ask the NPCs. You're, you're not going to get any quests unless you ask, actually ask people for them, the NPCs. So, and you don't have quest markers and stuff like that. You, you have to figure things out. Yeah, so it's uh, <laughs> it's yeah, full of mystery and intrigue. <laughs> no, yeah, from it. Yeah, you have to be creative with um, how you speak to the NPCs. I didn't play it, but from what I saw, it looked like a game that would made that was made with very few preconceptions. <laughs> yeah, pretty much like. So, but yeah, we we play we play a lot of game during lunches lunches this year. Uh, what 
I'm trying to figure out what was my favorite game we played during a lunch. Right now we're playing Amiga games on uh, Nils' old Amiga. But before that, we tried Hungry Ghosts on PS2. Yeah, like Hungry Ghosts. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a cool Jap Japanese um, and like a first-person adventure game, like a horror adventure game, where you like very. Uh, very, very slowly uh, examine very small but very detailed areas and uh, try to uh, try to like so solve puzzles and find find items uh, and get jump scared by by uh, weird uh, weird uh, ghosts. <laughs> yeah, it has a fun mechanic where when you when you want to take something, you have to actually slowly reach out your hand and take it. And of course, sometimes uh, something happens when you try to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it has a very like uh, uh, over the top, like a uh, heavy metal uh, cover <laughs> aesthetics. Uh, so it's it's del delightful. And also, like my my favorite among the the games I brought this year was the PS2 Ultraman. Yeah, uh, I game. was gonna say that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So well, you you can you can. Yeah, the, 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 the PlayStation 2 Ultraman game is a. Uh, it's, it's an extremely faithful recreation of the first season of Ultraman, which aired in like 1964 or something. Yeah, it's an ancient Japanese sci-fi show, and the, just right. and, the, and the game captures the feel of the show just right. Yeah, it's, it's, like it's, a... it's, it's this weird, slow-paced, uh, specific mechanic wrestling game. Yeah, where, where you, you where wrestle you, giant where you monsters. become Ultraman and wrestle giant monsters, yeah. and then there's clips from the show. Yeah, it's placing and the like a narr narrator voice uh, <laughs> comes in over over the action and and uh, and the and the mechanics are like unique because it's Ultraman. Ultraman doesn't really have health. He has a little blinking light on his chest, <laughs> and if it starts blinking faster, you become stronger, but also you die. Yeah, yeah. If you, you, uh, the closer to death you get, you get the stronger you, you become. So yeah, it's, your, it's, your supers become better, and the monsters have like this meter that if you fill it up all the way, they explode. Yeah, so it's yeah. a it, it it's a like a, a fake mechanic faithful to the show that makes for a really good game. So it's a, it's a good marriage. Yeah, because you can't just use your finisher immediately. It doesn't work. You have to. Uh wrestle and punch the monster and build it up and then yeah, just like, to finish like it. sit on the monster and just yeah. bash its <laughs> so head it, for a minute. Yeah, so it makes for like a good dramatic uh, arc uh, during a fight. Very good game. And beside that, we have, we have played a lot of board games this year, but I don't know if we have time to go into specific board games. I, I, I like board games. We're in a, mm. still in a golden age of mo modern bo board games. Yeah, there are so many good new board games being made. It's, um, it's, it would be a shame to overlook them. My roommate is slowly, fi is slowly filling our apartment. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> the, that's the thing with board games. You can, can build a wall with them slowly <laughs> because once, once once the hook is, hooks are in, you, you can't stop. I asked Daniel what's, uh, what's uh, Ilya's apartment like, and he said it's full of board games. It's full of board games. <laughs> None of them are mine. <laughs> yeah, so that's the games we've been playing, yeah. and now the future. Yeah, the, the future, future we've what's, been playing. <laughs> what's uh, coming. Yeah, we, we mentioned that uh, we will uh, be reaching uh, um, 1.0 uh, sometime uh, in two, 2020 um, when we have released every every character's uh, story mode in uh, Slap City. Um, besides that, we're currently um, uh, currently in the process of uh, getting It of You One released uh, physically on uh, on the Switch. Yeah. So uh, um, we're uh, through uh, one print, so we uh, are. Is that officially announced? Yeah, it's uh, it is on the Twitter. It's on the twi or Twitter, so. Yeah, I, I, I just. I, uh, I, I, I assume <laughs> if it's on the Twitter, it's it's allowed here. It's announced now. Mm, it's a shame that uh, Remedy's story mode would probably be done way earlier than uh, Valentine's Day. 
<laughs> right. It's well, we can, we can, uh, we you can. Want, you want to wait till that? Yeah, we can. We, we can, can release, release uh, the SMM I mean, first. Uh, the, the plan for slap uh, patches is uh, the the first thing we're going to do next year is to integrate some balance suggestions being collected. Yes. We were gonna take and, a look at do, uh, levels, possibly a bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to rewrite the stage selection screen during that. And we need we'll more, take, space, we'll take a look more space for stages and stuff too, so that so that the game gets a bit more polished, and then we we'll make the rest of the single player, and then we we'll make a bit more polished and release the last thing, <laughs> and then we'll be one for now. Yeah. And the game will be for real. <laughs> yes, it will finally be a real game. Yes. So, Instead of a puppet game. <laughs> <laughs> so, besides that, uh, you wanna wanna mention the, the you mentioned remedy. You wanna yeah, we can talk about our personal projects. I guess uh, that's what I've been working on remedy cart a bit. Um, what, what's uh, what's your st status and thoughts uh, about the game? Well, I made the menu, so that's over with at least the boring part. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> so you just have the the fun parts of making was, the game. I was implementing like the story mode. You were gonna ride around in your car and bump into NPCs and like get into a race, oh, like, okay. like a remedy game, but, yeah. uh, with a car. But when you were like freely going around the uh, stage and not following a not following a set uh, course. A course. Uh, I got kind of uh, like seasick because oh. it's such a low, low, such a low resolution. Oh, okay. And so I uh, switched to, to a top camera. Okay. For that part, so you can. Yeah, but like a map view when you're out of. Uh, yeah. But possibly still with the same controls, mm, yeah. slide around with the car. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's where I'm at right now. So do you draw, do you make specific pixel cars for every top down? Uh, no, the top, the top works because they're, I don't know, the cars are in that kind of uh, RPG perspective anyway. Okay. You know, it works. Um, and that's that. Um, Working on many small projects. It's, yeah. uh, you're making that, talking about. You're making Remedy Card in uh, the Godot engine, right? Yeah. Um, because I use Linux, and uh, while well, Unity does work on Linux, and I Slap City works and stuff, but uh, I feel like Godot has a better support for it, and I like free things. <laughs> <laughs> free is nice. Uh, anyone else have um, any like hobby projects they, they want to mention? If not, we're moving on. Well, <clears throat> if you um, follow my Twitter, I made a whole lot of uh, Mario Maker 2 courses like a couple of months ago and posted them as uh, Thradon from uh, Remedy, which is, mm. by the way, how you pronounce your name, Thradon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, and I also made uh, I made a quake level, and now I've just finished making a, another quake level that I'm gonna release. And uh, it's like something small to do. It has a lot of secrets. It ha it has a final secret, and it has two secrets, not actually tag the secrets. <laughs> Are they then? then yeah. Are they really are secret? They really <laughs> secret? <laughs> really secret. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have, um, I very much like the original Doom and Quake, and I find uh, making levels for them to be very interesting because it, the games are complex enough and um, that you can make some very cool things in them, but they're not too complex, so it's not overwhelming to make a level. It's very easy. It's. Uh, it's the perfect middle ground to just be creative in. And I really like uh, light lighting in Quake. It's very interesting. Like most of the uh, visual flair and the mood comes from the, the way you handle the lighting. Which is why my levels are usually very dark or rather very uh, specifically lit. <laughs> <laughs> they look very professional. Mm. Yeah, they look really good. 
Yeah, but at the same time, the editor I'm using uh, is a bit more modern because in the original Quake, uh, Romero said that uh, all he had was like an overhead perspective. If he wanted to have a sloping floor or ceiling, he had to create a slope and then rotate it 90 degrees so he couldn't see it anymore. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> um, well, I've, I've been, uh, I've been uh, starting to post more of um, like my hobby projects on, on uh, my Twitter uh, recently uh, at Professor Steam Gear, uh, that's my old old handle, uh, or Professor no. But um, we're kind of running out of time, so I don't know if uh, we should go into them. Just a, a couple of, of uh, yeah, we, game we can games. we can do more podcasts. Yeah, exactly. So there's an, we're, there's an entire next year. Exactly. I'm, so let's all say I'm not opposed to doing podcasts. Yeah. Let's all say for all long once each, and then we can end it. Okay. <laughs> so people know once and for all how to say okay. it. Yeah. For for all, for the like ninety nine percent of people whose first podcast this is, you need to know how to pronounce frallan. 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 Yeah, that's um, it. Yes. Uh, greetings, greetings to all, and thanks a ton to all the all our. Like uh, all the people who gave uh, who's been playing uh, Slap City and the Discord community, Thank the you mods. For your yeah. Yes, Serious thanks. Thanks. Yes. Everyone's still playing Psychord for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Psychord is great. <laughs> it's, In small doses. We're really thankful for all like the supporters and fans out there. It's it's amazing. <laughs> I have a kazoo and I'm not afraid to use it. <laughs> Headphones. <laughs> <laughs>